Okay, so we will start. Oh, we will. Oh, come back. All right. So, Chad, can I introduce you? Is that okay? Hey, so guys, for those of you that didn't know, those of you that aren't sophomores, um, last year, you may remember Mr. Robertson, um, one of our assistant principals. Um, he actually moved to Lehigh, somewhere up there. At any point, guys, we actually um, picked up a new assistant principal uh, this year. For those of you that don't know Mr. Wilson, um, this would be him. I'm just getting to know him as well love the guy. And so if you ever have the chance to interact with him, it'll be a positive experience. So would you like to say a word? <laughs> there you go. Very well done. Hey, so guys, let's do this. Let's gather at the board and let's talk a little bit about where we are relative to grades. Understand that at the end of the day today, we're going to have plenty of time to answer individual questions, but let's do this right now. So guys, we are now in the middle of September. We've been working together for about four weeks. We are now at the end of the first unit. Guys, we have no new material to cover. We are now done with unit one. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But gang, what this means is when we come back on Monday, you're going to have your first unit test. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to put some of your fears and concerns to rest as we get ready for this test. And we'll talk a little bit more in a minute about how to prepare for it. But guys, with that said, let's see if I can do this fast enough that it's not a bad thing. Guys, these are your grades. So obviously you can't see names, so I'm not giving away any private information. But guys, what I want to do is I want to gather your attention around Skyward right now. And I want to show you what grades look like to me. And I also want to show you something that is concerning to me and probably concerning to you as well. So guys, this is where we're at. The yellow is homework. And guys, we've done five homework assignments in this unit. Actually, we've done four, but then there's also that lab safety thing that we did, which is frankly just a way for me to know that you guys have all done the lab safety. So guys, we have had four homework assignments that you should have submitted through our website. Then guys, in addition to that, we have done two and in a moment, three labs. We did that measurement activity the very first day of, well, second day of the year. Then guys, salt and sand labs, many of you turned those in last time and they were immediately returned to you. And then guys, we've got the density labs, which we'll be turning in later today. So we will have three labs at the end of today that will also be a part of your grade. Now guys, here's the scoop. As you look at this, I think you'll see that there are a frightening number of zeros and sevens. So guys, let's be really clear about how this works. So if you have zeros in your homework, that means that you have not submitted it. Now guys, with that said, there is the possibility that, that the ball got dropped as you're filling out the Google Forms. Guys, I understand that this is an imperfect process. So if you believe that you submitted an assignment and it's not recorded, guys, or if it's misrecorded, like London, wasn't it you that said I recorded your lab wrong? So guys, understand there's the possibility that this could happen. Either I miss an assignment or I type the numbers in wrong. But guys, here's the problem. I will never know I screwed up unless you bring it to my attention. Because once I enter the scores, they're just sort of done with what I'm doing. So guys, please check your grades. We'll have a minute to do that. I'll just have you grab your phones in a second and look. But guys, understand it's up to you to keep track of this. So if you have zeros, it means I didn't get the assignment. But guys, look at all the sevens in this column. That means you're turning things in late. And guys, I understand that doing things online, having to actually remember when you get home to pull up the Google Sheet and enter scores. Guys, I totally understand that that's something new. Um, it looks like we're getting better at it, that the number of sevens are going down as we move to the left. The frightening thing for me is the number of zeros that we're starting to see. So guys, understand it's up to you to get this stuff submitted. 
Um, if you have questions about how to do that, please let me know. But this is where we are relative to homework. So let's now be clear about this. When is your homework finally due? Is there a date after which you cannot turn this in? And guys, the answer is Monday morning at 745. Monday morning at 7.45 is when we take the test. And because none of our homework is busy work, guys, you need to have the homework done in order to succeed on the test. So the deadline for late homework is the moment the test starts. And so guys, I would strongly encourage you between now and Monday morning, get these assignments done, get them submitted so that I can give you credit for them. Then guys, for those of you that haven't turned in the labs, the deadline for the labs is not the day of the test. The deadline for the labs is the end of the quarter. So you have several weeks to worry about these labs. You don't have to wait until the end of the quarter, but the deadline is the end of the quarter. And guys, when you're ready to turn those in, they just simply go in this basket. Late, late lab work, all lab work goes in here. So guys, questions about any of that? Does that all make more sense now? Is anybody going, wait, I still don't understand expectations relative to homework and labs? You guys okay? Is that good? Okay. So guys, with all of that said then, um, let me just freeze this screen because I know I'm not going to be able to do this carefully enough. So let me get rid of this. And we understand that we've got a test coming up next time. So I can now get rid of this. And I can get rid of this. And I can quit out of this. And guys, this is what we're going to do for the rest of the day. Please understand that this is not meant to be one directional. If you have questions as we're going, please ask. But guys, we now have two goals for the rest of the day. Goal number one is to get super transparent about what tests look like in this class. Guys, I know that first tests in any of your classes are weird. I'm going to do everything I can to make it less weird. Then guys, after that, the last thing we're going to do, and frankly, some of my students in the past have told me, this is one of the most valuable things they've done in my class all year, is I'm gonna talk with you guys about how to study for math and science tests. Guys, these are time-proven, research-supported methods that will help you study not just for this test, but tests in general. If you want to write any of this down, that's why you have the paper in front of you. Guys, the stuff about taking the test will obviously not be on the test. So this, is all, this entire day is just to benefit you. So, again, if you want to write any of this stuff down, you're certainly welcome to do that. This is going to take us like 20 or 25 minutes. And then, guys, at the tail end of this, you're going to have time, London, to talk with me about your lab. If you're concerned about whether I've misrecorded homework, come talk with me. And then, guys, you're going to have time to either start studying for the test or maybe fine-tuning your density labs if you need time for that. So, again, guys, 20 minutes of talking about the test and how to study, and then we'll go. Yeah. We are, um, but what I want to do is I want to give you a couple minutes at the end of the day to sort of fine tune if you need, and then we'll put them in the basket before we walk out the door. Yeah. You guys get a sense of what we're doing? Okay. So guys, these are the things that you need to know about testing in this class. I don't think you need to write these ideas down. Guys, let's just talk about it. So are we clear on this idea? The deadline for late homework is the day of the test. Yes? Okay, then guys, thought number two is this. The tests that you take in this class are actually a blending of two different formats. All of the tests that we take in here will be partially multiple choice or matching or true false. Bottom line is stuff that goes on the bubble sheet. But then guys, all of our tests will also include a free response section. Those are the things that you hand write. Those are the things that then we grade by hand. So guys, here's the, how your tests are graded. Every single test in this class is a 100 point test. You're graded on a percentage. That percentage then becomes points that goes into Skyward uh, within the testing category of your grade. Remember, tests are 55% of your grade in this class, so they're weighted fairly heavily. Guys, the next thing you know, need to know is this. I understand that we just said that tests are going to be multiple choice and free response. But the bigger idea is this. The material that you will see on our test fits loosely into two categories. Let me explain to you what I mean. Guys, there is some stuff that you learn today 
hear this out, not today. There are some stuff that you learned in this unit that if you don't understand it, you will never be successful in this class. Let me say that again. There's material in this class that you learned in the last three weeks. And if you don't understand this stuff, you will not be successful for the rest of the year. Guys, these are things that we call essentials. This is a word that we're going to talk about a lot throughout the year. So guys, there is stuff in this class that is essential. If you don't know it, you and I are going to work together until you know it because you can't move forward without it. So guys, some of the stuff is essential. There's other stuff, however, that's nice to know, but it's not critical to know. And so guys, in order for you to do well on the test, you need to know both. In order to get an A on the test, you've got to obviously know the essentials, but you've also got to know the nice to knows. You're learning all of chemistry, and that's how you get an A on the test. But guys, here then becomes the question. What if you don't do well on the test? Hear me out. Guys, we do not do retests in this class. My experience has been this. Kids that don't do well on the test the first time typically don't do well on the retest. Uh, it's a lot of material, you're swimming in it, you're not sure how to proceed. And guys, our experience has been offering retests, typically scores don't go up much. So guys, if we don't have retests, what do we do if you don't do well on the test? And guys, the answer is this, and I know it's a lot of words, but let me explain this to you. If you do not do well on the test, the very first thing that we do is we separate the material on the test into essentials and non-essentials. And we evaluate your tests. And then guys, after we evaluate the test, if you're demon, this is cool, if you're demonstrating mastery of the essentials, your grade automatically goes up. If you get a 25% on the test, but if you can show me that you know the essentials, your grade goes up to a 75% and you don't have to do a thing. But guys, what if that's not true? What if you didn't do well on the test and you don't know the essentials? And guys, the answer to that is you then go through a remediation process, you learn the essentials, you take a replacement test, which is typically one page, it only covers the essentials, and as soon as you demonstrate that you know the essentials, your grade goes up. So guys, understand when I say we don't do retests, what I'm saying is you will never take the entire test twice. But what will happen is you'll take a little mini test that only covers the essential materials. Guys, everybody does well on this. I've got data to show you that if you engage in remediation, your understanding's gonna go up, your grade's gonna go up, everything's gonna be groovy. So guys, the bottom line is this, ready? The worst you can get in this class is a B. Let me say that again. The worst grade that you can get in this class is a B. You're going, really? I don't have to do anything and I'm going to get a B? No. Here's the way this goes. If your lab work is solid, if your homework is all turned in on time, many of you have already dropped that ball, but guys, if your lab work is solid and if you turn on all your homework in on time, guys, the lowest score you can get on a test is a 75 after remediation. A 75% test average with solid other work will give you a B in this class. So guys, understand, all you have to do is engage, turn things in on time, do solid, thoughtful work when you're writing up labs, and then if tests don't, do, don't go well, engage in remediation, and guys, you can get a B in this class. It doesn't mean some of you will get lower than that. But guys, understand that if you're doing your part, our structures are set up that you'll get a B in the class. Will some of you not? Absolutely. But understand we'll be able to point at why. So guys, any questions about the test stuff? Please. Yeah. No. Mm -mm. So, and I'll, I'll show you, we'll talk more about this later. But the way that it goes is if you fail the test after doing remediation, 
you will, assuming remediation goes well, you'll get a 75% on the test. After you hit that 75 mark, bless you, then the, the quality of your work could bring your grade up to a B in your other stuff. But no, that's the point, that if you do well on the remediation test, you can't get an A on the test. Um, and we'll talk more about those details later. But you can bring any score up to a 75, um, increasing the likelihood you'll get a B in the class. So guys, other questions about this? Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about essentials. So, guys, you understand that essentials are the critical things that you need to understand. Normally, we will not tell you what they are. Most of you will be able to figure it out because you understand, oh, this is important. But guys, understand, we don't tip our cards until after the test because we don't want students just studying for the essentials. But guys, in this unit, I'm going to tell you right now what they are. So guys, when you come into class, after your tests are graded, you will actually see this sheet sitting on your, on your desk with your graded test. And guys, this is the way we do um, essential identification. So first of all this, can you do significant digits? That seems essential, right? You will be able to determine, guys, with a number, whether or not you have mastery of significant digits. That's essential one. Essential two, applying significant digits in calculations. No surprise there. We've been doing it all year. And do you have mastery of that? Then, guys, estimating in measurements. Do you know that if you're using a digital scale, a balance, you don't estimate, and with a, with a, like a graduated cylinder, you estimate a tenth? Then, guys, calculating mass by difference, and then calculating percent error. Guys, these are the essentials that you've got to get in order to move forward. If you would like this list, uh, you'll find it in the screencast. Or if you guys want to grab your phones right now and just shoot a picture of this, you're welcome to do that. I'll leave it up on the screen for a minute. But guys, I think for many of you, you look at this and you go, oh yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so the essentials are significant digits and the math and making measurements. Guys, that's what we've been doing all year. So I think for most of you, it's clear that these are the essentials. I'll give you a second to shoot the photo though if you want. You guys okay? All right. <clears throat> So, Sam, you asked the question about can you get an A if you failed the test the first time, right? Guys, let me show you the other part of this document. This is actually the top of the page where we do essential stuff, but there's a bottom to this page. Please don't try to make sense of this right now. I just want to let you see it so when you see it next week, you don't go, oh my gosh. But guys, functionally... This is how you figure out what your grade on the test is going to be. It has to do with whether or not you demonstrated mastery of the essentials, and then it has to do with the score that you got on the test. And guys, by bringing together your score on the test, along with your demonstration of essential mastery, you then either get to do remediation, or you can actually work for a little bit of extra credit or if you're in this zone, you got better than an 85% and you mastered all the essentials, that just basically turns your test into refrigerator papers and you're done and ready to move forward. But guys, this is the rubric that we will use to analyze your test and you'll see that coming uh, next, next, next week. Yeah? So if we get above 85%, mm -hmm. we'll No, so if you get above 85%, you're done. If you didn't understand all of the essentials, you can remediate on your own. But our thinking is anything above an 85% is a solid enough grade on the test that, that we're not going to chase more points. You may need to pick up some additional understandings, but your grade, if you get 85 or above, that grade will stand. Other questions, guys, about the test? Did we do okay? Multiple choice, free response, this sort of stuff. Anything else? Even if it hasn't been a part of this, anything else you want to talk about about the test? You really good? Okay. So, guys, this then is how we're going to spend the rest of our time together. So, 
You now understand what the test looks like. You now understand this idea of essentials. Now the question becomes this, how do you get ready for the test? And guys, let's be really open and honest about this. 80% of you will not study for this test. We've collected data. 80% of you are going to walk into this test blind, hoping that it goes well. But guys, the reality of it is, is for many of you, you will not only walk into this test blind, but it will go well. Don't, I'm not suggesting it, but guys, that's just the reality of this. You guys tend to be bright, capable students. Honestly, you don't study a lot if we're really being transparent about this. You're going to stumble into this test and everything's going to go great. Guys, understand if that's the case for you, I am not now speaking to you until you run into trouble. Because guys, the one thing that I will guarantee you is that everybody in this room at some point is one, going to struggle, and two, is going to need support and a strategy for studying for tests. So guys, if that's not you right now, I know it's hard to look into the future, but guys, eventually all of you are going to be thinking to yourself, I really need to study for this test. Now guys, here's the problem. Teachers have done you a huge disservice. Sometime in junior high school, your teachers, many times as you're walking out the door in junior high, said, hey guys, we have a test next time, be sure to study. And you get home and you're like, what the crap does study mean? And I would be willing to suggest that none of you in this classroom actually have ever been taught to study for tests. Guys, in the past, in years past, and we don't have time to do it now, I've actually set my students up for this. And I've said, all right, guys, at this point, the rest of the day is yours to study for the test. We're going to do it quietly and individually. Ready, guys? You've now got an hour study for the test. Guess what everybody does? Say it again. Man, I haven't seen that yet. Why you're, oh, because they're just screwing around. Yeah, yeah no. There's actually enough pressure to study that people are like, oh crap, I'd better study. But guys, imagine that. If you were asked to study right now, what would you do? What would you reach for? Yeah, many people do that. It's Riley, right? Yeah. yeah, guys, many people do this. This is what study for the test looks like. You grab your, you grab your binder and you start paging through your notes and all right, we got some digits and oh look, Namburger gave us the notes, that was nice. And I got a little thing about volume and weight and guys, you just start reading through your notebook. I would propose to you that guys, first of all, this is an enormous waste of time. I can't imagine a less effective way to study for tests than reading through your notebook. Guys, it's an absolute waste of time. And even worse than that, many times, this does more damage than it does good. So guys, I would suggest to you that if your study strategies involve just reading through your notebook, stop, because it's not gonna get you anywhere. So guys, if that's the case, how then do you study for tests? And guys, you can use this if you want. You can stick this in your pocket and save it for later if you want. You can just ignore this if you want. But guys, what I'd like to do is I would like to share with you study strategies and understand these only work for math and science classes. These don't work in English. These don't work in history. They don't work anywhere else. But guys, in math and science classes, I guarantee you, if you'll invest the time and energy to do this, this works. So guys, when you start not performing well on tests and you come to me and go, oh my gosh, what can I do? The first thing I'm going to ask you is, how did this go? And many of your answers will be, I don't know, I haven't tried it. And then we'll go, okay, let's try this and see if it works. Because guys, this stuff works. So. How do you study for tests? Well, guys, again, feel free to scratch any of this down that you want, but how do you study for tests? Well, guys, the first thing we need to do is talk about setting the stage. So when you study for tests, the first thing you need is a quiet place. Now, guys, here's the deal. I understand you have seven siblings at home, Five of them are in diapers. Your home is an absolute disaster. The minute you walk in the door, it is chaos. You have two of your siblings sleeping in the same room as you. Your life at home is a disaster. Guys, quiet place and home have nothing to do with each other. 
So guys, if you're looking for a quiet place to study, where do you go? Say it again. Library. library is a great place to go. And guys, our library closes early. The Orem Public Library, open late. It's a great place to go. Guys, what if you can't get into the library? Other places, Tori. Beautiful. And there's actually really great support that not only is that quiet, but the stimulation of being outside helps with study so long as it's not distracting. Guys, what are other good quiet places to study? Thoughts? Where do you guys study? Really? You have no ideas? Because it's quiet? That's amazing. What's that like? <laughs> wow. Oh, good. So maybe that's the answer is give everybody else a phone and then it's quiet. Guys, let me offer you two other thoughts. I know that this is a little risque in Utah County, but I'm going to throw it out there anyway. Coffee shops, Starbucks, Beans and Brews, Juice and Java. Guys, those are wonderful places to study. You don't have to be drinking coffee to be there. If you're going to go there, at least get something to drink. But guys, coffee shops and even like Denny's is a great place to go to study because it's naturally quiet. Um, again, if you're going to go, please buy something just because that's good form. But that's a great place to go. Guys, another great place to go is down UVU. Every building on UVU's campus is unlocked pretty much 24-7. You can always get into a building at UVU, and many times you'll find little study stations. Go down there. It's a great place to study. So find a quiet place to study. Guys, second thing is this. What materials do you need when you go to study? I would suggest these. When you're studying for a chemistry class or math class, but chemistry in particular, Guys, you're going to want paper, pencil, notebook, calculator, periodic table, and then internet access. Could be a phone if it has to be, but I would suggest to you that not using your phone is a better idea because your phone is not only a way to gather information, it's also where you get bombarded with Instagram and Snapchat and everything else that's going on in your world. Guys, phones are a great resource, but I would be careful because they're also huge distractions. Yeah? Oh, guys, thank you. Yeah, thank you, London. I totally forgot. Guys, I broke into the uh, bookstore and I stole periodic tables. <laughs> I'm just going to give them to you. Um, don't let me forget to do this in just a minute. I'll get them to you in a second. Thanks for reminding me. So guys, once you've got all your materials pulled together, let's talk a little bit about some ideas about studying. So idea number two is this. Is it a good idea to study with friends? Sometimes. Yes, no, sometimes. Guys, the answer is sometimes. So now let's talk about when and who. So the first answer to friends is this. Not at first. Never start studying for a test with friends right out of the chute. I'll show you more in a minute. Guys, invite friends into the conversation when they can be a benefit to you. But then, guys, number two is this. When you're picking the people that you study with, they have to fit two criteria. They have to be smarter than you and ugly. Seriously. Guys, do not study with people that you find attractive right? If you're a guy, do not study with that girl that you're like, hey, I'd like to study with her, but I'd also like to date her, because then you're going to be all up and trying to prove yourself to her, and you're not going to get any work done. So guys, bottom, seriously, so guys, bottom line, no missionary studying, okay? No dating, no, no converting, no proselyte. You're just looking for stupid, well, smart, ugly people to study with, okay? So understand what that means. If somebody now comes up to you, and if Isaac comes to me and says, hey, do you want to study? It means two things. One, he knows you're smart, and two, he thinks you're ugly. Okay? But guys, seriously, don't study with people that you're trying to do social things with. It doesn't go well. What about this? Do we listen to music when we study? Again, it's sometimes. Let me tell you what research says. Studying to music actually works 
so long as the music is familiar. There's this, so, there's this, this lie floating around, guys, that says studying to classical music helps. That's actually not universally true. Because if I was studying to classical music, I don't listen to classical music, and I would pay attention to it because it's novel to me. So guys, if you're going to study to music, it's got to be those songs that you're so familiar with that it just fades into the background. So maybe you make up a Spotify playlist that simply says study tunes. But guys, they've all got to be tunes that are so familiar to you that they just fade into the background. Also this, guys, you understand that your source of music is your phone, right? And if you invite your phone into studying, you are inviting a distraction into your study space. So be careful about, because you know you're going to start swiping through songs. Be careful. So guys, what about this? Do you eat when you study? You should. Guys, your brain chews through calories like crazy. But if you don't understand this, you understand fats, carbos, and proteins, right? Which of those three does your brain burn? Carbs. So guys, when you're eating while you're studying, you want to be looking for carbohydrate-rich foods. Fats, are, fats and proteins are heavy and they slow you down. Guys, you want sugar. You literally want sugar when you're studying. But now, guys, we're going to have another uncomfortable Utah County conversation. What about caffeine? The answer is absolutely. Yeah, guys, there's phenomenal research that says that ingesting caffeine while studying or doing anything really increases, they call it your mental acuity. Guys, caffeine works with one caveat. Don't caffeine load at the tail end of studying because then you're not going to be able to sleep when you're done if you're studying at night. So guys, use this judiciously, but understand the research is clear. Regardless of where you stand on whether caffeine's good or bad, guys, we do know that it helps with studying. I'm not saying, hey, go get it and tell your parents Nappenberger had said you had to, but I am saying it does work. So then guys, what about this? Exercise. Absolutely. Guys, if you can get in 15, 20 minutes of not, not like hit the wall, beat yourself up, but if you can get in a run, if you can get in a walk, if you can get in a ride, something to get your blood flowing before you study, guys, it works great. And mid-study, if you can just get up and walk around, also effective. So guys, what about taking breaks? <clears throat> Absolutely. But here's the rule. 20 on, 5 off. Not the other way around. Guys, when you study, research shows that anything past 20 minutes and your brain starts to shut down a little bit. So you want to be 20 on, 5 off. Not more than 5, but guys, a great way to do this is this. Take your phone. We all have Bluetooth headphones, right? Take your phone, set it on the other side of the room. Sit down and study for 20 minutes. Then in those five minutes, take a break, get up, grab your phone, check your social media, whatever you need to do. And then, guys, five minutes later, discipline yourself to come back. So let that phone be the five-minute distraction and get it out of your space. But, guys, you have to take breaks. If you're just going to try to study for hours on end, it actually doesn't work. So take breaks. Then, guys, finally this, scheduling for the test. This is going to be way more important in college when you actually study for big exams. Um, for those of you that are taking AP classes, you maybe understand a little bit of this as well, because AP tests are not tests you can study for in small chunks. So guys, you need to learn to, st to schedule how long you need to study. So maybe tonight or tomorrow night, you sit down, you look over the, what you need to know for the, our test on Monday, and you, you just ask yourself, is this something I can do, <laughs> bless you, is this something I can do Sunday night? Or do I need to give myself more time? And you lay out a schedule. Then guys, finally this. The last thing that you need to know in order to study for the test is what's on the test. Now guys, understand that this takes on different shapes and forms. In our class, we will always give you a study guide. Now guys, what I'm about to share with you might sound a little edgy, but let's talk about it. Guys, if your teachers do not give you study guides, 
What can you do to figure out what's on the test? You could go back to homework. But guys, you know as well as I do, everything that's on the homework will not necessarily be on the test. So guys, how do you find out what's on the test? You could, and guys, especially in college, well, even in high school, go talk to your teachers. Because if you walk into a teacher's room and say, hey, what's on the test? Guys, understand, not only are you going to find out what's on the test, you're also gaining incredible credibility with your teachers because they go, oh my gosh, this is a kid that actually cares enough to ask. But guys, let me offer to you another idea on how to figure out what's on the test. Find old tests. Find old tests. Now guys, let's talk about this. In college, many times you will find people that have taken your professor's class the year before. University professors tend to hand tests back, and it's a great way to find out what's on the test is to get old tests. But guys, what about in high school? Is it cheating to get old tests? Well, guys, here's the answer in this class. Yes. We do not release our tests. So guys, if you get a hold of a copy of our test for this unit, understand, one, it was stolen, Two, it's not supposed to be out there. And three, if you use it, you're cheating. But now, guys, what about teachers that hand their tests back every year and never recollect them? Well, guys, this is my thinking on this. And if you think this is morally sort of in a gray area, I'm, I'm open to that. But, guys, this is my thinking. If a teacher hands back a test, they know it's out there. If they choose to re-administer that test, that's their choice but they know that the test is out there. And if you are using that as a reference or guide to get ready for the test, maybe you disagree, but I think that's fair. So long as the teacher knows that it's out there. So if you're not sure, ask your teacher, hey, Mr. Ellingford, do you hand your test back? Well, yes, I do. You know that they're out there. Yes, I do. At that point, I think that's permission to use them to study off of. Again, guys, in our class, um, that's not the case if you find a test um, using it is dishonest. So, but again, guys, if you're not comfortable with that, that's totally fine. That's my take on the situation. So, guys, any thoughts or questions on any of this? Y'all good? Okay. So now, guys, here's the scoop. You now know what's on the test, and this is it. So this is how we're going to spend the rest of our time together. We got just a few minutes left, and then you're going to have time to get some stuff done. So, guys, this is it. This is the test. Here's the promise that I make you. And you don't know that you can trust me on this yet, but you will. Here's the promise I make you. Guys, there's nothing on this sheet that's not on the test. I'm not out to waste your time. I'm not just loading this sheet up with stuff going, here, study this, and oh, by the way, it's not on the test. It's on here, it's on the test. But guys, the other way around is also true. If it's on the test, it's on here. So you don't have the luxury of reading through this list and going, you know what, I never really understood significant digits, but it's probably not going to be on the test. So no harm, no foul, I can skip it. Guys, if you skip it, you're not going to be prepared for the test. So guys, this then becomes the question. How do you use this to get ready for the test? Well, guys, this is what I would suggest to you. Look over this paper and find the verbs. Do you see them? Would you circle them with me? Guys, the first verb that we run into is to know. And then, to know. And then, to do. Guys, I would propose to you that every single one of your math and science classes can be broken down this way. There's stuff that you need to know, and there's stuff that you got to be able to do. Now, guys, here's the trick. If you study for these the same, you're wasting your time. So, gang, what I'd like to do to wrap up today is I'd like to offer you strategies in terms of how to study for the no's and how to study for the do's. If you want to flip your paper over and scratch this down, you're certainly welcome to do that. It is in the screencast. But guys, these are time-proven methods that will make you more efficient and more effective when you study. 
So the first thing that you've got to do is you've got to be able to distinguish the no's from the do's. This is the way we always structure our study guides. But guys, if you don't have this advantage, I'll bet you could figure it out in your other classes. So guys, when we start talking about the no's and the do's, guys, understand the no's are the things that you need to know the definitions for. These are the things that you've got to be able to think about and talk about. And you study for these differently. So let's do this and then let's talk about it. First of all, this. When you're thinking about studying with other people, everything above this line, the focusing, has got to happen by yourself. Then, guys, everything below this line, this is when you start inviting friends into this. If you decide that's a good idea, keeping with our two important rules about who those people should be. So, guys, let's do the no's first. So, guys, when you are looking at focusing on the no's, you're going to do two things. You're going to brain dump onto a piece of paper, and you are going to eliminate or highlight the things that, that, that are included there. So, guys, here's the first thing you got to do. This has got to be in writing. Just thinking about this stuff is not as effective. So what does this look like? Well, guys, it looks like this. You're going to have your study guide, and you're going to have a blank sheet of paper. And here's what you do. So you go to the very first word, which is qualitative. And physically, on a piece of paper, you're going to write down the word qualitative. And then, guys, at this point, you're going to brain dump. And if you go... Qualitative's root word is quality, but when we think about quality, we're not thinking about how good the data is, we're thinking about the qualities of the things that we're looking at. Therefore, qualitative data is descriptive in nature and it is collected through the senses. If you could write all of that down, guys, you know that you know qualitative, and then all you gotta do is draw a line through that because you, you're done with it. But guys, what if you sit down and you go, Ooh, qualitative. Uh, not a clue. Then, guys, what you're going to do is you're going to circle it. You're going to put a star by it. You're going to highlight it. Whatever you need to do. But, guys, you're going to go through all the no's. And in the course of about, like, ten minutes, you're going to quickly figure out which of these things do you already understand and which of these things do you need to relearn. Then, guys, the question is this. Once you've narrowed the list down to what you need to relearn, what are you going to do to relearn these things? What would you do? How do you physically, structurally, figure out ideas, concepts that you need to possess? Well, guys, this is where... Um, oh, I can't do that, actually. Guys, this is where you make flashcards. On the front, you write the word. On the back, you write the definitions. Now you're going, wait a minute, I don't know the definition. That's why this is something I need to review. So guys, where do you get the definitions? No, you could. I would be careful with Google. Because if you look up qualitative on Google, you're going to go to a Wikipedia page that's going to be paragraphs about qualitative. Guys, where should you go to get this information? Right out of your notebooks. Guys, did you notice that you're studying for the test and you haven't even touched your notebook until now. And all you got to do is make flashcards out of the things that you don't know. And then, guys, if you want to, grab a friend. Go, hey, would you quiz me on these? Help me learn the things that I don't know. Maybe you trade packs of, of flashcards and you just quiz each other and, and help each other learn the material. So, guys, that's what you do with the no's. Questions or thoughts on that? Y'all, please. So it was the third day of class. It was actually the day when we, second day of class, the day that we went over to the lab and we made all those measurements. And if you remember on the measurement activity, you collected qualitative data where you describe things. And I said, don't use color because it's too easy. And then you did quantitative. It was that day. So you'll see it in your notes as well. Okay. So guys, we good on the nose? Now let's talk about the do's. Guys, this is where you are going to end up crippling yourself. So guys, when you do the do's, here's what you, here's what you do. 
Rework your homework. But now, guys, let's talk about this. This is how you're going to screw this up. And in your heart of hearts, you know that this is going to be true of some of you. And I'll know that it's true of you when you turn in your test and the whole last page is blank and across the top of it you wrote, I thought I knew this. Because guys, this is what you're going to do. So one of the things that you see is that you need to be able to do the calculations from the density lab. And they look like this. And so, guys, when you're going through and doing these calculations, as you're re-looking at the homework, you grab this homework assignment and you start reading this, and you're like, hey, yo, density is mass divided by volume. And then I took this number, and there's a G, and then a number, and no, oh, I did some math. Okay, so, and then I can, I remember this one was a little harder to solve because we did, and I put, and, and that, and oh, this one was bigger, and okay, I got to remember to write down my equations, and I do some, and, and then I subtract, and, and, and okay, good, I'm ready to go. Guys, if that's how you're going to study for this, you have no stinking idea whether or not you can do this. The only thing that you've proved to yourself is that you can read correct answers and agree with them. So how do you study for something like this? Well, guys, here's what you do. Grab the homework assignment and get rid of the answers. This is why I have you do your homework on another sheet of paper so the answers are not trapped in the questions. But guys, seriously, and if you don't have a blank copy of it, print it off our website. And literally, guys, get the homework assignment and redo it. And as you're reworking this problem, you're going to be like, oh, crap. I don't remember how to solve number two. How did we cross multiply there? And wait a minute. Why is there only one significant digit in the answer to this when there's three significant digits in all these numbers? And guys, all of a sudden, you're going to find out you don't know what you thought you knew simply by reading over your homework. So what you're going to do then is you're going to start jotting notes to yourself. How do I handle significant digits in percent error calculations? How do I solve for x when x is in the denominator of a fraction? You're going to jot these notes to yourself. And then, guys, at this point, it's then time to start working on relearning this material. Here's how you do it. Guys, first of all, you can go back to your class notes. See if there's support there. If that doesn't work, check the screencast. Guys, these are things that we talked about in all of the screencasts. In addition to that, guys, this is a great time for study groups. Grab people that can help you muck through this. But guys, what if all of that fails? Well, radical thought, come ask me. I would love to sit down and help you. But then, guys, truthfully, some of you are going to just start looking online. And if you're going to do that, um, I don't think I have it in my slide. Let me just tell you. Guys, if you're going to look for support in this, do not go to Khan Academy. Khan Academy chemistry videos are not great. They're great in math. They're not great in chemistry. So guys, if you're looking for support in this, I'll write it down on the board, Bozeman Science. Scratch it down with me. This is the best resource that you're going to find for science support. Guys, it's called Bozeman Science. Um, this guy is actually the science teacher for my niece and nephew who live in Bozeman. He's an amazing science teacher up in Bozeman, Montana. Um, and the videos that he has created in physics, chemistry, and biology are second to none. So guys, Bozeman Science is a great place to go. So guys, there you have it. Those would be, this is my best shot at helping you prepare for this test. Now guys, here's the scoop. When you look at this, the first thing you've got to do is count the cost. You need to ask yourself, do, am I really interested in engaging in this? And if you know that this isn't something that you want to invest time and energy in, just be honest with yourself and say it's not. But when you get to that point, you're like, dang, this is something I really do need to study for. Then, guys, this is a great place to go. Certainly, this can be adapted and changed as you see necessary, but it's a great foundation. 
And now, guys, if nothing else, you can now finally say that you have a teacher that didn't just say, study for the test, but they said, let me show you how to study for the test. So, guys, I'm curious. Have any of your other teachers talked with you about how to study? Isn't that weird that they've been saying, study for the test, for, since you were in seventh grade, and nobody's taken the time to show you how. So now you have some ideas. So guys, we're done. Questions or things we need to talk about? You okay? Okay, so here's where we are. Guys, we have about, what, 12, oh, hey, we're doing great, 17 minutes left. So guys, this is what the rest of our day looks like. We have density labs that we need to turn in. Um, so we will do that at your leisure by putting them in the basket. But guys, I, I, I offer you a service if you're interested. If you would like me to review your labs before you turn them in, I would be more than happy to do that. But guys, understand these labs are due before you leave today. Um, if you're done with the lab and you just want to huck it in the basket, that's fine. But understand then, guys, you've got time to study for the test. Please, also, if you want to grab Skyward and check your grade. Do you already have one? Yeah. Keep it as an extra. You never know. Guys, let me encourage you to check Skyward. Make sure that everything is recorded properly. And then, guys, finally, one last thought. Let me encourage you to write your names on these periodic tables. They all look the same, and um, you want to be able to get yours back. Yeah, Alex. Oh, no, yeah, because it'll get ruined here. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your three-ring binder and make it the first page of your, of your... Perfect. Yet another reason to get one. So, guys, are we all settled? If, uh, and I know, like London, we need to talk. Guys, I'm just going to be available to you. The only immediate thing is make sure you turn in your labs before you go. And guys, the rest of the time is yours to sort of get things wrapped up.